when you change the food flowing through the gut, you're going to change the microbes that live in that gut. If you were eating the standard Western diet full of meat, you're going to foster the, the production of lots of bacteria that are not so friendly, the bacteroidetes phyla uh, that put out pro-inflammatory byproducts that make the gut leaky, that drive inflammation in the gut wall. Well, you pull out the meat and the dairy, and now all the nutrients coming down are high fiber ones filled with the uh, with the resistant starches and the beneficial fibers that make it all the way to the colon uh, that promotes the growth of beneficial microbes like Prevotella. Uh, and these uh, their byproducts are more anti-inflammatory and they heal the gut wall. Uh, and also these microbes, their byproducts, are molecules like dopamine and norepinephrine and serotonin. These are feel-good molecules uh, that get into the into our tissues that uh, work their way into the brain. People often notice that, hey, you know, since I've gone plant-based, I feel generally more positive uh, and generally happier. That's not a placebo effect. <laughs> that is a gift from the microbiome uh, that has now become far more benevolent. When you stop eating other animals' cholesterol, your own lipids are going to be improved and far less likely to cause atherosclerotic plaque formation. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, the fats in our diet work their way out to our skin oils. Uh, and a diet based on animal flesh uh, often creates a body odor like the uh, Green Bay Packer locker room in halftime. And many people, the guys especially, notice, uh, hey, uh, ever since I went plant-based, my wife says, I don't, I don't smell anymore and I don't stink anymore. And that's, again, not a placebo. That's a, a, another gift from the, uh, uh, the uh, plant-based oils in the diet. Uh, when you stop consuming dairy products, you lower the amount of estrogens uh, that you're ingesting. Uh, these uh, the cows and the dairy have been genetically modified. They uh, so they'll give give milk all through their pregnancy. They're pregnant cows now, and their milk is full of estrogens, like all female animal animals' milk would be, and uh, IGF one, etc. Well, you pull out the dairy. Uh, and the hormone-laden uh, other uh, meats and animal products, and your own levels of estrogens that drive everything from breast lumps to prostate cancer, those decrease over time. Uh, your kidney function gets better. High-protein diets are not friendly to the kidneys. When all those amino acids and meat slam into the filter membranes of the kidneys, they, they drive the kidneys into a state of what's called hyperfiltration. And, and, the, and it's a stressful state that is maintained month after month, uh, causes damage to the kidneys, opening the door uh, to kidney failure, chronic kidney disease, CKD. Uh, the asthmatic folks notice their lung mucus gets thinner, and so they wheeze less. Uh, the white blood cell count starts dropping, but people don't get more infections. It's because the owner of the bone marrow, where the white cells are made, stop praying in that bone marrow with endotoxin three times a day. So white blood cell counts normally go down. Uh, at least um, twice a year, I get a call from some family doctor panic uh, that their patient's white cell count is dropping. Uh, and should they send them to a hematologist? No, you shouldn't, doctor. That's what's supposed to happen. That people are supposed to walk around with blood counts, uh, white counts of 3,000, 2,800. Uh, that, that's not disease. We've just accepted the normal increase rate because of the diet most patients are eating. So these are just some of the changes that happen when one goes from an animal-based diet to a plant-based diet. And if someone asked me, Dr. Clapper, tell me, what changes when one leaves the standard Western meat-based diet and goes to a diet based on whole plant foods? What changes in a word? Everything changes. It's a different biochemical body. The very tissue fluids, the very cell milieus inside the cell, outside the cells, uh, in the gut wall, in the artery walls, everything has changed you know, to a far less inflammatory, far less oxidative, far less hypoxic uh, milieu into a, a tissue bed that is flowing 
uh, with oxygenated blood, more nutrients, antioxidants, etc. It is such a profound change uh, that is measurable and predictable, and I will show you the effects it has on various disease states. I could spend three lectures going through uh, how a plant-based diet benefits every one of these organ systems. We don't have time for it, but the, there's getting to be a growing medical literature. Uh, in, uh, it's hard to open up a medical journal without seeing some article on how a plant-based diet improves function in one or more of these organ systems. Well, but can you get enough protein on a plant-based diet? Absolutely. The beans, peas, chickpeas, lentils, grains, nuts, seeds, they're full of protein. And you eat three meals, you eat 2,000 calories based on these whole foods. You're guaranteed of getting 60, 70, 80 grams of high-grade, complete protein. A protein deficiency is not uh, an issue if you're getting all your protein uh, from whole plant foods. If you're uh, if you're a junk food vegan and you're just uh, granola bars and energy drinks, yeah, you're gonna uh, get a uh, get yourself into trouble. But if they're whole plant foods, you're going to get enough protein, not an issue. So I want to take uh, in the next few minutes to talk about two specific diseases that that are reversed with a whole food plant-based diet and talk to you about the mechanisms. That is the promise of this lecture, mechanisms of disease reversal.